Hey, welcome, thanks for watching. In this episode, I continue the story of my bicycle tour of Southern California, Oregon, and the Pacific Coast route. On the previous episode, Leaving Morning Elk, Coastal Redwoods, Road Construction, Trees of Mystery, Last California Coast, and Into Oregon. June 15th, um, Harris Beach State Park. Head north, of course. There's a bite in the air and marine dew as I pack up camp. I talk with the touring couple nearby for a few minutes before heading off. This kicks off my first full day of riding in Oregon. From Harris Beach State Park, the ride starts with overcast skies and cool temperatures. Highway 101 passes several unique ocean rock formations. Today's main hill climb for the day leads into Gold Beach. One of the historic coastal bridges crosses the Rogue River. There's threat of rain and a dinosaur sighting before I finish at Humbug Mountain State Park. A squirrel shoots across causing me to break to avoid any mishap. Even more so than California, Highway 101 is the main thoroughfare along the Oregon coast. Good old 101. This could be most of my trip through Oregon on 101. Traffic isn't especially bad or busy, but I'm seeing a highway design in Oregon that creates an especially bad situation for bicycling. At many of the uphill sections, an additional passing lane is present. This in itself isn't bad, but the design is such that the road narrows to have little or no shoulder. Further complicating things, often installed guardrails force bicycles out into the lane. In these passing zones, vehicles race through fighting for lead position. There's little attention given to some dolt on a bicycle. Jeez Louise. That guy almost hit me. I almost got whacked by the mirror. I just had a little bit of an incident, so I thought I'd stop and talk about it. Um, I was coming up this last hill, and um, there's a large uh, pickup truck behind me and I usually watch in my mirror um, seeing if people move over maybe a hundred feet or so before he passed me I saw him going towards you know moving to the other lane it was two lanes up the road so I thought okay he sees me he's moving over so I stopped looking at my mirror and the next thing I know I hear this whoosh and I look and he's just like right next to the line he had big trailer mirrors <clears throat> so I think the mirror came pretty close to my head so Definitely scary. I don't know what was going on. I did see him go and swerve, kind of drift into the other lane again on the other side. So, might have been drunk or distracted. So, pretty scary. Distracted or malicious drivers are the biggest negative to touring. More climbing. I think maybe that's Will's head. Kind of looks like Will's head. Just like in California, in Oregon, there's plenty of spectacular coastal viewpoints. Well, 345 feet it says. The Thomas Creek Bridge is listed as the highest bridge in Oregon, with a height of 345 feet and a span of 371 feet. It opened in 1961. I'm pleasantly surprised by this little pullout. I've never been here or even seen pictures of it. The people show the scale, but I'm pretty sure you aren't supposed to walk on it. Oh, 
vehicles to the right so far, including Wells Head, Thomas Creek, Natural Bridges, and Ark Rock, are part of the Samuel Boardman State Scenic Corridor. A short forest dirt trail out on the Cape provides clear views of the Ark Rock. The overcast skies start to clear, improving the outlook for staying dry. Looks like it could turn out to be a pretty nice day. A clear sign of Oregon beaches, a bundled up stroll on the beach. Caterpillars cover the road in places. It makes them hard to avoid with my wheel, but I do my best. They were working on the fiber optic lines. Almost there. The long stretch from camp to Gold Beach primes me for a good lunch. I come across a Thai food cart. It's popular with takeout and I have to wait about 20 minutes to get the food. It's good and worth the wait. I find out later it's highly rated. I was lucky to stumble upon it. Leaving Gold Beach and crossing the Rogue River is one of the upcoming historic Oregon coastal bridges. This one opened in 1932 and replaced the challenging ferry operation that was in use. Especially notable are the two-tiered obelisks on each side of the span. The bridge is listed on a couple of National Historic Landmark registries. I take care navigating the obelisks, especially along the railless sidewalk, to ensure I don't spill onto the highway. Short ride off 101 adds some peace for today's ride. 
I got a tailwind. Why? Probably because rain's coming. It would seem. This is a nice road. up to a field and out back. My only worry is on things like this is do they actually go through? Sometimes the map planning isn't, isn't nailed right on. Some surprises. My goodness. I'm going to get there in no time if this tailwind holds up. Here's the difference. I'd be doing like 8, 9 miles an hour. Right now I'm doing Got stopped by the food market. Got me a hot dog, a cookie. Man, a five hundred dollar, five hundred dollar, five hundred calorie cookie. I don't know if that was right. I thought for a second there was a bear. Oh, the dog, dog. All right, come and think. Let's see if he chases. Good dog. No, he didn't chase. That's good. No wind, tailwind, slight tailwind. I think rain's coming. Heading north and so is the wind, apparently. Mostly. Threatening to rain. It's, it's a high probability at this point. It looks like it could be raining right in the mountains. Can't tell if it's just fog or rain coming down. I think it's rain coming down. An unexpected dinosaur sighting. The clouds increase again and I get a few raindrops and sprinkles. Nothing too bad, but it encourages me to reach camp soon. It's nice to set up the tent before everything is soaked. So the sooner I get to camp the better. It'd be nice to set up before it's raining. Now I have a chance of keeping things dry overnight. At least on the inside. I think this might be the last not the last big climb for the day. Should be. Other than a few little runners. It is looking really threatening out here. Humbug Mountain State Park. Sinko is on the other side. It's on the right. I was incorrect. Incorrecto. It looks like I'm two for two for Oregon Parks. Humbug Mountain State Park is in a forest near a creek and has small brooks nearby the campsite. The hike bike sites are located away from the main camp and has unique individual spots. However, there's no electrical power or mobile service near the site. I made it to Humbug. Uh, very interesting hike bike. It is a long ways away from the bathroom, but it's really cool. They have like individual sites. But, uh, I don't know, seven or eight, I didn't count them. And there's a little kind of a creek waterfall that you can camp near if you want to hear the water. The nearby babbling brook adds to the relaxing ambiance. There are two other bike campers here with me tonight. With the threat of rain, I decide to put the tarp on I bought the other day over the top of my leaky tent. That should add the extra protection I need. 
With the short distance, light winds, and low climbing, the ride today was on the easy side. Just what I wanted and needed. On the next episode, High Water, Big Bird, Rocky Shore Trails, Bandon, Mountain Roads, and Sunset Beach. Thanks. <laughs> Trying to figure out the last place to get food. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, that's what we need to figure out. Yeah. Those log trucks, man. That guy has his engine before he caught it. He was still hauling. Alright, probably no more viewpoints unless it has a really cool sounding name or. I can see that it's a viewpoint from the road. <laughs> Getting cold again. A little bit of wind too. It's unfortunate. It's making such a good time again. Up in Everdale. Start off making good time. Turns to a grind. Ready, fight. I'll get you back. Cry. I will. Thank you, sir. Are you riding today? Yeah, I've been riding every day for 31 days. Oh, where'd you come from? Southern California, in the border. Wow. Yeah, heading, heading up to Washington. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Yeah. I felt the rain drop. Rain drop on my head. It's not good. It's past the southbound tour, and he was wearing rain gear. Not a good sign. 